Hello viewers, today for service and repair we have a Hunter Century VN which uh, is completely locked up as far as the bearings are concerned. This is from 2003 and so while Hunter certainly what it wasn't what it used to be in like the 80s and the 90s in 2003 still was generally decent quality as far as similar fans was concerned but I guess portable fans maybe not so much you know Hunter used to make a solid product but now they just make junk speaking of junk bearings is locked so let's get this thing cleaned up and lubricated to begin we have this wonderful guard which locks up with this stupid ring system so let's undo this screw down here at the bottom and then let's we'll see how easily this comes apart okay that's opened up now So let's see. Okay. Um, I think I see the way this works now. Okay. So the way this works is there's a little tab there. right there and this is going to have to be lifted up over that tab and now it's free so I should let this come off and for some reason it's still stuck together I guess it has those two tabs keeping it together okay so that's off now the blade has got a whole bunch of like string or something on there and it's got a set screw up at the top we're gonna undo that set screw and that should let the blade come off hopefully Okay, that came off surprisingly easily. There's a little I don't know, string or something in there. Alright, now we got four four more screws to get into the motor area. Looks like we can only loosen these and then still be able to take it off. Well, we can loosen all three, see on this one. Okay. So now we got all the um, guard off. Ironically enough, there's like oil there, but that's not where the oil needs to be. The oil needs to be in the bearings, not on the guard. Um, I think these screws are going to have to come out now, I guess, anyways. So, I'll just take those out. And now uh, we'll take these four screws out. These have a washer associated with them.
Okay. What? Oh, jeez. Look how much oil is in there. Oil all over everything here. Oil all over this mount. I guess this is what holds the motor onto the um, onto the unit. I'm going to put one of these screws back in place just as a placeholder for now to keep the motor from being all over the place. Why is the back... Oh, there's a separate screw on the back. Okay, so we're into the motor now. There's some dust, but not that much dust. There's oil all over this front, but nowhere else. There's no oil anywhere, except for on the front. What in the world? No wonder it doesn't work. None of the oil made it into the right plates. That's ridiculous. That absolutely explains why it's not working. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up because there should not be oil on all these different components. Alright. There was some oil on the front of this too. just shouldn't be. Should not be any oil in there at all. Okay, that's all cleaned up. Now as far as the motor is concerned, it's branded a Join 1, whatever that is. And it's absolutely a basic run-of-the-mill El Cheapo oscillating fan motor and you're just paying a fortune for the hunter name and, and a piece of junk motor within it. These uh, these fans were a total ripoff. They were probably quite pricey too and it's for absolutely no reason. So I'm just gonna wipe off some of the dust that's in here. A little bit of excess grease on the bottom. Get that off. We're going to have to take apart this whole oscillation mechanism to get the um, to get the bearings lubricated. So let's go ahead and do that. First we're going to have to remove the capacitor. and then we have um, three screws very tight screws that one they're very soft too they're stripping right out There's all oil on the side of the stator too, which is also not a place where the oil needs to be. Got to make sure you got a bit that's exactly the right size, otherwise this will just strip out like this what the screw is doing. This strips out. This is going to turn into a major freak show. I cannot believe how much oil is just all over this thing, and yet there's none in the bearings at all. What a stinking piece of junk. So you can't trust no names anymore.
All these companies from years ago that used to be like repeatable brand names or General Electric for example. Nobody's making their own stuff anymore. They just outsource it from whatever random Chinese brand was cheapest that day and they send it out as their own and it's junk. This never would have been acceptable in the in the prime of Hunter. Never. in a strip. Got a brand new bit. Let's try that one maybe. Um, if it strips I'm going to have to drill it out. Which I really don't want to do that. That goes pretty deep. Let's try this one. goes it's stripped so um, well I think what I will try to do first is I'll try to hacksaw it into a common style bit and maybe I can then use a flathead to undo it okay so I got a hacksaw here I'm just gonna kind of go along the screw here now of course we're gonna get shavings into the motor which is no good so um, try and do this as much as I can to the side or maybe like this I don't know this is getting flaky maybe I'll do it this way try to do it standing up Okay, now make sure we get all those shavings out of there. Okay, so now I should be able to take a common screwdriver and hopefully get a good grip on this thing and get it out. There it goes. Okay. Alright, that's out. Let's see, is the other one going to be 
a pain in the neck too. Nope. Okay. So that's it. We're done with those screws. What a flipping joke. You shouldn't have to do that. Screws should just be easy to remove. And the head should be made of a material that's not soft. Anyways, it's made of whatever it's made of, so let's keep going. And we're certainly not going to put those in anywhere near as tight when we reassemble. Because that was ridiculous. But that hacksaw trick is something I've used quite a few times and it really works great. You just turn the screw into a common. And I find with the common screwdriver you got a less, much less chance of it stripping out. So that's that. Take that off so that we can oil the rear bearing. And now we got to get the motor to split apart. And we're probably going to run into some issues here with the screws again. Um, there's lubrication just everywhere on this thing. Which is astounding considering how there's none in the bearings whatsoever. It's like they just threw a can of oil at it instead of putting the oil where it's supposed to go. not made right that's all just simply not built correctly okay so we've got four screws on the outside of the motor here let's see how difficult they are to remove oh, gosh here we go again. that wasn't too bad it broke free this one uh, cord is kind of in the way Okay, so that wasn't anywhere near as bad. This is another stupid design, have the cord running through where the screw has got to come out. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Okay, now, let's see what transpires here. The cord runs through the rear. So we can't separate the stator from the back, but we can separate it from the front. Like that. Yep, the bearings are bone dry. What a joke. And the shaft, um, it's not rusted at all, so I think I'll just slip it out as is, but make sure I just clean everything off of there. There we go. Okay. So the, the source of the failure here is, we take a look into this bearing. You see there's a white material in there. That's oil wicking. And if that was full of oil, it would be feeding the oil into the bearing as needed. But as you can see, that material is dry. There is no oil in that bearing at all. Probably because the oil was all over the front of it. So let's take this off. Oh, geez, look at that. More oil. Unbelievable. I don't understand how they missed the oil, the, the bearing. It's just, it's everywhere. 
Can't believe Hunter put their name on this stupid thing. Unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. I've seen oil, you know, leak out before, but this is ridiculous. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some oil. There's two different kinds we can use. We could use the zooming spout, which is what we're going to use in this case. Or we could use the 3-in-1 in the blue can, which has the infamous picture of the fan on it. Uh, right before we do that, though, I want to go ahead and clean out the bearing. Or clean out both bearings, rather. So we're going to take a relatively clean towel. And I'm going to put this around a screwdriver. And we're going to put this through here and kind of clean the inside of the bearing out. Because there's going to be some dried out lubrication in there. Not much, because I think it's all just kind of leaked out everywhere. But you can see there's a good amount of, of uh, sticky, old sticky oil in there. So I'm going to make sure we get all that out, because that will cause it to have additional friction in there that's not good I'm just going to keep doing this until it comes out clean I think it'll take three attempts in this case okay so we're good there That's nice and clean. Uh, let's do the same thing for the back. Which is not going to be as easy to get to because the, the windings are in the way. You've got to be very careful doing this because if you scratch the windings you get a, a burnout scenario so you can't scratch the windings at all. There goes the tool I needed at a critical moment as I'm holding something that can't get damaged. The rear bearing is surprisingly clean. I think in this case the trouble was with the with the front bearing. From my experience, a lot of times when these fans lock up, it's the rear bearing that has the problem. But it looks like in this case it'll be the front. Got a little bit of oil leaking out the back here, but nothing major. Nothing like the front. Alright, that's pretty good. That's clean. Alright, so I'll just kind of let this sit back there for a moment. Now let's get some oil in this in these bearings. Oh, let's clean this too. Clean the shaft off. Because you can see it's got some dried up lubricant down there as well and that's got to come off in fact I'm going to slip this whole thing off and this is all sticky here get everything cleaned off here I'm even going to take a little bit of detergent oil and put that on here to aid in the cleanup
Okay, you know, this is good. Look at all that stuff in there. That's all got to get cleaned out. Can't be running it like that. It's not going to work. This should be able to spin pretty freely on the shaft. It's not going to have a chance in the condition that it's in. There's two washers here, a plastic one and a, or a white one and a rubber one. The white one is, okay, I'm just getting confused here. There's three washers here. Um, there's a plastic, rubber, and a plastic. Plastic goes on either side of the rubber. And these two need to all be cleaned up because they're not going to be working properly if they're just gross. And it takes some time to get all these things cleaned up. So you just have to be patient and go through here and do it correctly. Because if you don't do it correctly, it's just not going to work. It's going to just develop the same problems. Some people will tell you you could put a drop of oil or two in there and get it going again. And that would be correct. But if you skip all this, it's not going to hold. It's just going to get all screwed up again real quick. So you really got to take the time and do it correctly. Okay, so... Plastic, rubber, plastic. And now see that's all clean on the front. This is moving. All this stuff is moving freely compared to the back where this is just about locked on there. And this is filthy and not moving at all really. So let's do the same thing on the back and get that all cleaned up. This may be partially to blame on the manufacturer for using the wrong kind of oil or a very cheap oil. That could be the cause of this. Um, it's hard to say. Could just be lack of lubrication and the extra heat from the, the additional friction just caused everything to lock up and get all grimy like it's like it is. My guess would be probably cheap oil. As we know, they'll do anything over there in these these uh, offshore factories to to save a penny. They'll use all sorts of cheap materials, and it's just it's not good. It's not like the old America made fans of the 80s and the 90s. Stuff's just not what it used to be.
Okay, that's all clean now. So I'll put this stuff back on. Try to avoid getting this grease on these components. It's impossible to avoid it completely, but do the best you can to avoid it. I'm doing a really bad job avoiding it with this washer. Holy mackerel. If you get that grease in there, that'll gum up real quick in the bearings because these bearings are not meant for grease. This is a very lightweight application. Can't be using grease in these bearings. Okay. So I'm going to put away the 3 and one in the black can because we're done with that. And we're going to use the zooming spout going forwards here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put oil all on that white material that's in there. It needs to be filled up with oil. And it'll, it'll take quite a bit all the way around. Okay, so that's been lubricated. We'll just set that down there for now. And then this side, we got to do the same thing down in here to this bearing. Because it's got the same issue. There's no oil back here. Okay, so I want this to be sitting kind of flat so that the oil can drip into there. Or just, it's not going to drip, but it's got to seep in, so I'm going to lay it down like this. Let the oil seep into these wicks. So you can see now it's, it's soaked up all the oil I put in there. So I'm going to put a little bit more, in fact, because... It was very, very dry. Okay, and while that's soaking in there, I'm going to go ahead and wash off the components, the blade and the guards. Alright, all the components are drying now, so let's go ahead and reassemble this motor. Now that the bearings have been adequately lubricated, I want to put a little bit of oil on the surface of the shaft. And as I slide this through, I'm going to try to avoid contacting the worm, the worm gear onto the bearing surface as to not get the, the grease on there into the bearing. It's impossible to avoid completely, just do the best you can. And then uh, I'll put some oil on the front. Not a lot, just enough to kind of coat the surface. And then I'll slip this bearing on over it. Okay. back upright so it's easier to work on. 
and uh, aligning correctly here yeah that's all aligned correctly so I'll put this back through here for now I'm just going to put that one screw back in Okay. What is going on here? This is all discombobulated. Okay, so now we're going to put the motor screws back in. That's these four longer ones. Now these screws do not have to go particularly tight, but you do want to make them as even as possible. I'm just going to go to the torque of my screwdriver. This is a very low power screwdriver, so that's fine. Couldn't do that with a bigger one. This screwdriver won't even make them hand tight, really. I can make them a fair bit tighter by hand, but there's no reason to. Alright, so that's back together. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add one drop of oil right into the bearing directly. This isn't really necessary, but I kind of like to do it just for additional lubrication. I'll do this at the front as well. And we'll make sure we wipe off any excess so we don't get oil everywhere. Now at this point in time, a lot of times the bearings will be very stiff and it's an alignment issue. And so to fix that, you take a screwdriver and you just kind of strike the shaft a little bit in every direction. And I move it around a little bit up and down and it aligns right up. And it's spinning very freely now. Which is how it should be. So we have solved the bearing lock issue. So let's put the oscillator back on. And remember these screws is not going to be torqued down real tight like they were originally. That was ridiculous. kind of hard to work with because the head is all screwed up. I'm not even going to go as tight as the screwdriver will make it. I'm just going to barely put these in. I don't know if they were over tightened at the factory or if they just became tight over time. I don't know. But these are just barely going to get snugged up. There's really no conceivable reason for them to be tighter than that anyways. Okay, put the capacitor back on.
and this this is busted up this is missing the switch there should be a piece that goes on here and comes up to the top that goes through the the, um, the motor cover that's missing so you know that's not going to be too easy to use <laughs> once I put the cover back on I probably have something that would fit on there I gotta look in my parts bin I bet I would have something that fits it won't look right but it'll fit alright now we're good to I think we're good to put the rest of these screws back on Correctly. I think it's not going through. I think that just made new threads, which is not really correct, but whatever. The fan wasn't built correctly to begin with. Alright, I'll go get the rest of the components and then we can finish the reassembly. Okay, so this will go on the back. Like this. And you'll see how this, this now becomes pretty much unusable. I want to just check and see if the oscillation works while I can push the button down. I guess it doesn't matter that the switch is missing because it looks like the oscillation doesn't work anyways. And I'll do reality that's fine with me because I don't really ever use the oscillation feature anyways. Okay, let's finish putting this back together. This will slip on the back like this with the missing button but it's irrelevant because the whole function is missing. Partially intrigued as to what it looks like in there, but a lot of times those oscillations have little, two little balls against the spring, and it flings apart, and it just creates too much frustration to be worth checking. So I suspect the gear is just stripped. I'm not intrigued enough to deal with the balls and springs in there. Okay, so this goes over this like that. And did those screws have to go in after this? I'm a little bit confused now, I guess. Yeah, I guess they did. Goof. Jeez, if that's the case, this is going to be pretty tricky to get these screws going. I guess you could hold the motor by the shaft and get it into alignment. It's kind of ludicrous to have to do it that way because you've got now you're looking at three pieces you're lining up you're lining up the holes from this piece you're lining up the holes on a bracket and you're lining up the holes in the motor and all three of them move independently of each other oh gosh this is horrible what a demented design. Uh, and it's not even like right, I'm gonna have to put the screw through here and then I'm gonna have to turn the turn the motor to the right to get it to, to align.
This is terrible. A fool. A fool designed this. A greedy corporate fool designed this product. Because nobody with any sense would set it up like this. That bottom screw looks like it's aligned up right now. I mean the rest of them are not even close. I don't know if you've seen this on the video or not, but the rest of them screws. I mean look at this one. The motor is, is not even the motor hole is so far over it's a joke okay I'm kinda getting this this one is is kinda coming into the frame now just barely see they never this product was never meant to be serviced and that's a shame because if you're willing to go through this the stupid thing will probably run another 15 years but they want you to just throw it out and buy a new one that ain't right this is cross threading Okay, the other two are starting to come into alignment now. The top is the worst, the one on the right's not too out of whack. Okay, the one on the right on the top is still a bit out. I think I'll be able to draw it in just by screwing this together though. threads too bad okay so it looks like came off that way so we'll put it back on that way I suppose in theory you could put these these three in and start them first this whole flipping thing is not even aligned correctly still the whole thing is just like turned a bit see these screws isn't in that screw is in that screw is a little bit off that one's okay that one's way off not sure if I'll be able to fix that or not and I can't retighten these once once the thing is there that's pretty good like that Let's see if it'll stay if I put these back Try and loosen this all up first, and then I'll put these three screws in.
Okay, that's all back together. Let's slip the blade on. There's a little notch in the shaft here, and that's where the set screw is going to hit. So what I usually do is I put the thing in where I think it should be, then I tighten the set screw just a little bit, and then I back it off a hair. And if, if I had gotten it correctly, it would have stayed in the it would have stayed in the groove. Okay, so now, see it moves in and out a bit, but it stops. So that's a good indicator that I've got the set screw in the groove. So now I can tighten it down all the way. Okay, so the blade is on there, spinning freely now. Let's see if it's out of balance. Huh, it's not that bad. The balance isn't bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad enough that I really want to start messing with it either. I'm going to leave it alone. Um, let's see. Actually, you know what? The clock is, is uh, a bit out. I wonder if I fix those two. So you can hear these two blades are, are hitting sooner, so they're a bit bent a bit forwards. If I uh, bend these two back, try to get them all the same clock, the um, the balance should be a little bit better. It's a pretty flimsy blade, so I'm not surprised it's a bit out of whack. Let's see if that's any better. Of course, no, it's not plugged in. If that didn't make it any better, then we're just leaving it as it is. Oh, that made it much better. Alright, good. So the balance is pretty good now. Now, now we've got to put the guard back on. And I think that's going to yield some frustration because these ring things are pretty annoying. Although, since it lacks latches in place like that, this may not be too bad. Let's see what we have here. Huh, well that wasn't bad at all. Here's the frustration part. <laughs> Not sure how 
tight that's supposed to or needs to be that's probably fine alright so we're almost done I'm gonna get a, a cloth and wipe off the base because I didn't really clean the base at all yet this is just wet with the water and uh, we're just gonna wipe this down real quick it's not too grimy a little bit of dirt around the logo it's coming off pretty easily That's going to be good enough. It's clean enough for me. The only last thing I want to adjust is this tote. It's a little bit too loose. Oh, that's just the set screw there. That's easy enough. Yeah, that's better. So you loosen it, set it, and then it's in place okay so now it's done terrible design as far as serviceability is concerned that was much more difficult than it should be and I think very few individuals are really going to spend the time doing that most people would just toss it and buy a new fee in and that mentality is certainly part of uh, partially to be blamed on the product manufacturers for making things like this. So now that it runs, let's go ahead and plug this in and see if it's any good. Better be after all that. Good grief. Start up on low. Uh, let's go into the kilowatt meter here. The power rating it, it calls for is 0.4 amps. That doesn't draw too much power. We're testing at 121.8 volts. And right now it's drawing 0.22 amps. balance isn't perfect but it's not bad it's good enough that I'm not going to mess with it and we've evened out a 0.21 amps yeah it's not bad it um, it's a lot quieter than I thought it was going to be I find a lot of the fans of this style are very noisy and they don't even move all that much air this is moving an acceptable amount of air and it's not too loud Not bad. I can still feel it across the room. It's not like blasting out air, but it's serving its purpose. Okay, let's go to the two. And that's 0.23 amps. Oh, I forgot to get the power factor of setting number one. Better go back. 0.21 amps, 23 watts, and the power factor of 0.94. Two. That was a pretty big increase from low, and it's only going up to 0.23 amps, 27 watts, and a power factor of 0.94 still. And this is starting to move some good air. Huh. 
and the hive. That's pretty loud. Point three amps, it's 37 watts, and a power factor of 0.99. It's shaking a bit now. It's definitely out of balance, but not to the point where it's really worth messing with it. And this is surprisingly powerful. I did not think it was going to move this much air. Okay, that's running quite nicely now.